Iothera was founded in November 2020, and we acquired the assets from Curin, and they created the molecule and partnered with Novartis uh, for a number of years. And when Novartis returned the rights to Curin, we then negotiated the rights and created a company. We are the first one developing an s receptor molecule in oncology, uh, precisely as a combination with a stem cell transplant in AML patients, but it's broader than just AML patients, it's also other hematopoietic um, cancers. Mokravimod was discovered some 10 to 15 years ago, actually, by a Japanese company. And um, it was then subsequently, it went through the clinical, preclinical development program, um, which includes tox studies and all sorts of um, other studies that are necessary to bring it into human. It was then brought into human to evaluate safety and tolerability. And it was also actually in proof of concept studies in patients, in autoimmune patients, up to the now final stage where we want to bring the compound into the oncology indication. It's a modulator of the S1P receptor signaling pathway. This signaling pathway is needed for T cells to escape or to aggress, to migrate out of secondary lymphoid organs, that is lymph node, bone marrow, into the periphery. One important aspect is that this is a modulator, which means it does not suppress these T cells. The consequence of that is that in a hematopoietic stem cell transplantation setup, the alloreactive T cells will not migrate into the periphery, which means it they will not cause graft versus host disease, which is a, a, an associated side effect, adverse side effect of hematopoietic stem cell transplantations. They are kept in the lymph nodes, these alloreactive T cells, and now most importantly, they can still kill the cancer cells that are also in the lymph nodes. This means that graft versus host disease can be prevented in the periphery, but the graft versus leukemia effect of the T cells is maintained because mucralimod is not an immunosuppressant, it's an immunomodulator. In the long run, after the transplant, there's two major problems that really impact survival and also quality of life of patients. One is that the, the original disease comes back so that there's a relapse. And the other one is that uh, the patient suffers from, from severe chronic GVHD that's debilitating and requires a lot of treatment and a lot of hospital visits. This initial POC study in, in stem cell transplant patients was about uh, safety and tolerability in pharmacokinetics in this very vulnerable patient population that has a lot of co-medications and is, is, is taking many, many drugs at the same time. And, and uh, the positive outcome of that initial study was that it is possible and it is safe uh, to give an S1P inhibitor uh, in the run-up and during uh, the early um, post-transplant period in these patients. The long half-life actually translates into some advantages with respect to how you can treat the patients. You can leave out the dose and it has such a long half-life that that does not result in, in the, the, the drug um, dropping below a certain level that you need. So you can skip a drug's doses for one or two days which is actually quite a challenge in the patients that we're looking at. They have difficulties with swallowing. And uh, so if, for example, they cannot swallow on a certain day, that's, that's fine. They can still, they're gonna, still gonna have uh, the effect of the drug. Given the vulnerability of the patient population um, and the polymedication that made the patients very prone to be suffering from interactions of different drugs, Despite that, the patients did really well and, and we did not observe any relevant interaction with the, with the multitude of, of drugs that were given to these patients. So, so what this study really needed to achieve is to show that an S1P blockade can be given and administered to these patients for a relevant time period without causing uh, relevant or severe safety issues in the patients. 
currently we are planning to perform a phase 2B trial uh, that is comparing Mokravimod uh, to placebo. The plan is to include 249 patients into this trial. The feasibility is underway and the site selections all over the world. So we are planning to go to many different countries, including Europe, uh, the US and also Asia Pacific. We would submit for a new drug application in the EU and in the United States. However, before we come to this stage, we would engage much earlier already with the regulators. We were the first to um, obtain data, now we acquired from Curin, and showing a significant reduction of relapse, GBHD and improvement of survival.